for me, Western science is always playing catch up with the, the wisdom of yoga. And so they're very different in, in yoga is kind of like, kind of vague in a way. So it's talking about this nectar dripping down, you know, there's no specifics. Whereas Western science is like trying to get all the specific tiny little details uh, and just na- it's always constantly trying to narrow everything down. And wh- is this useful? Um, you, you can decide that. Um, so we'll, we'll delve into the, the sciencey bit a little bit more. So if you think of the, this is quite interesting, is that the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems so your rest and digest and then your your fight or flight so you could almost think of the fight or flight as that agony you know you need that to get going and then the the rest and digest is that soma so if you actually look at how the nervous system is laid out the sympathetic nerves are below or the majority of them are below the parasympathetic that rest and digest is all above so that's coming downwards and then the sympathetic moving upwards. Now if we go in a little bit more detail, you have your spinal cord, which is where all, all the nerves are running from. And above that you've got your brainstem. So here is where it's all our sort of keeping us alive functions, all the automated systems are. Um, so if you think of the headless chicken, uh, the reason it remains alive is is because its brainstem is still in, intact. Um, so as humans, we can stay alive with quite severe brain damage because the brainstem is is kind of like the the control center of keeping us alive, really. And then just above there, we've got the midbrain area. Now this is where, for me, it gets interesting. And this, I think, this area of the brain is one of the primary areas that yoga works with. Um, so think of this almost as the communicator between the brainstem keeping us alive and then above that all the, all the areas of the brain that make us humans and, and thinking and you know planning and all of this. So the reason this area is so important is because it's communicating both ways. So if we learn to use this area, you know, that means we can control our thoughts better. It means that also we can work downwards and also start to, to control the way that our, you know, our nervous system is working and functioning. So yeah, the, the yoga I, is really focusing in this area, I believe. And then if we zoom in a little bit closer, you'll see an area that Western science hasn't really got to grips with yet. Um, there's, there is research out there, but there isn't huge amounts, uh, and that's on the pineal gland. If you think about the description of soma, so it, it drips down, down the spinal column. Now the pineal gland is right at the top of the spinal cord, and it's a gland, so it's secreting. So it seems to make sense that the pineal gland might be one of the primary areas of soma. As well, it's said that soma is is released at night and in your sleep. Now, the pineal gland releases melatonin, which is released as we sleep and help. Well, it's it's released a bit before we sleep, and it, it brings on that that sleepiness. Um, so, if you think about melatonin, that I think is going to be one of the key areas of soma, um, as well. Again, this is this area of melatonin is starting to get researched more and more and more. As I say, science likes to play catch up here, um, but it has antioxidant properties that are far greater than vitamin C, vitamin E, B carotene, uh, garlic oil. So this is this is our life giver. Um, this is huge, I believe, and I think in the next few years we're going to be seeing more and more about melatonin. Um, so we'll delve a little bit more deeply in the next video and see how it's made um, and then start looking at how we can cultivate soma, melatonin, whatever you want to call it.